Hi and welcome to this tutorial on splitting patterns in NMR spectroscopy. Today we're just going to have a look at proton NMR. Now proton, if you remember, is the nucleus that's a minus charge there, of the hydrogen atom. So it's just a proton. So a hydrogen atom is made out of one proton, one electron. So we refer to hydrogen NMR as proton NMR. Okay, just to um, stop any confusion if I say proton NMR and stuff like that. So we're looking at the nucleus of a hydrogen atom which is proton NMR. Now for splitting patterns we have to define really what proton we're interested in. So in this example I've, I've denoted the hydrogen I'm interested in as, as red one here. And let's label this as um, carbon 1. It's attached to carbon 1. And we'll call carbon 2 this one. And carbon 2, I'm going to write in green, so I'll put green protons in for that. So if there's no hydrogens attached to this carbon, carbon 2, and just to stop any confusion as well, let's call this carbon 3. Okay, so carbons, other carbons can be attached to this carbon as well. If there are no carbon, no sorry, no hydrogens attached to carbon 2, carbon 3 or maybe even carbon 4 then this will be seen as a singlet, you'll just see one um, resonance line or one peak in the NMR spectrum so without any without any interaction with any neighbouring hydrogens you see one peak so I'll label that as no hydrogens and when I say no hydrogens I mean basically no hydrogens on the adjacent atoms, the adjacent carbon atoms. So that's the fundamental um, piece of information you need to have really, is that the splitting comes from the adjacent atoms. Now let's move on to a situation where we have one hydrogen attached. I'll draw this in green. So we've got one hydrogen attached now. And what happens now is the singlet that you had before splits into two. So that one, if I draw this in red actually, let's undo that line. Okay. So this one like splits into two a little bit. And it does that because it's interacting with one other hydrogen. When it sees that hydrogen it splits. And when it when it splits the height of this signal, this in initial signal, divides into two because it's now the whole of the area of that signal has to occupy this, these two signals. These two signals are actually the same hydrogen atom. Okay, so you get a splitting. And we call that splitting a doublet. So that's what happens when we have one hydrogen in position two. Okay, so we get a doublet, and we use the symbol D to denote it's a doublet. Now, if we, I won't go into too much detail with this, but if we use the height as a guide, then we'll see that this one is half the height of the original. Okay, and it's split by a certain value. Now, this value is really important, and we call that the coupling constant, but at air level, between the ages of 16 and 18, you're probably not uh, required to know that it's called coupling constant. But that all you do need to know is that that value is the same for the next hydrogen that's uh, on this carbon atom, on carbon 2. So what happens if we do have another hydrogen on carbon 2? Oops, choose a different colour. So let's put two hydrogens on. Well, if we have two hydrogens, this signal now, the one that had one hydrogen present, splits again. So let's see if I can do this without complicating things. I'll just move this out of the way. So I'll put that there, it's just a doublet. Let's split this again. So if this one splits into two, 
goes like that. Now it's splitting by the same value, so when this one splits, the middle ones overlap. Okay, and when they overlap, if this splits into two, you get half of that signal on this side. So let's do that. So you get a little signal there. That's half of that value. On this side, you get another half of one of those values. And in the middle, those two half values that meet up give you the same height as this one here, one of these two signals, because it's just half plus a half equals one. And this one, we now denote with a T, it's called a triplet. It's not the best drawn triplet I've ever done, and I'll put a few examples up at the side of what real triplets look like. But basically, if I draw it, sketch it out here, it looks a little bit like that. Now the reason for the different heights is because of this uh, constructive interference, if you will, and because this one doesn't have anything to interfere with, it just is half the value of the original one. And if you compare it with a singlet, i.e. with no interaction or coupling with the other hydrogens, then it's actually a quarter of the value of the original signal. So this, the doublets are half the value, and these little values on the edges here are a quarter of that because the half values have split again. And we call that a triplet. So I've just moved my nicer of the two triplets away and just label this up with green. So for two hydrogens in the C2 position, we have a triplet. Okay, and remember it's the adjacent atoms that are interacting. I'm only interested, this signal here is coming from this hydrogen atom. Not from these two, they all have their own signals. We're looking at this one and it's being split by these. Okay, so these are the, the ones splitting. I call them splitters. Now that is not a scientific word, I've just made that up. So they're the splitters. So don't think that NMR spectroscopists says splitters, they don't. Okay, so there are the splitters. I've now just created some viral word. No, I haven't really. Okay, so let's do the final one. Let's add another hydrogen. There's the other hydrogen. Put it in green again, make it all consistent. So now we've got a methyl group on the end. We've got three hydrogens present. So this signal here needs to split again. So if we split that one again, now it's really not important that you know that it splits. What is important, uh, air level standard, is that you recognize a singlet, a doublet, a triplet, and the next one, which is called a quartet. So I'll split this one, so let's split that one. Now it's really important that they're all split by the same value, and splitting them by the same value means you get some overlap when you do the splitting bit. Okay, so this coupling constant, this distance between the two peaks here, is identical throughout. And that's the only way you can get this particular type of splitting pattern. Okay, so those distances are the same. And that's what makes the overlap, like I just said. I'm repeating myself now. So when we overlap these, this one splits in half, but then it gets a little bit of this little value. So what you end up with is something that looks a little bit like this. Okay, and all you've got, you've got no reinforcement on the sides there, so they're with the tiniest values. And the ones at the side here, and the middle, sorry, are the larger of the two values. Of the four values. I'm really losing it now. Here we are. Try and make it look prettier. Okay. So now we have a quartet, which I'll, sh I'll put up at the side as well, a nicer looking one. Should look something like that, okay? Or well, maybe that one's a bit closer. Okay, I, I, it's official, I cannot draw quartets. Let's try and do that again. Yep, it is official. So that's supposed to be four signals, two small ones, two large ones in the middle. 
Now these ones here will be half the size of that one again. These ones will be half of that one plus half of that one and so on and so on. And for the um, the keen ones in the audience, if you will, they can work out what those ex exact figures will be. And we denote that one with a Q for quartet. So there are the four, and that's a single, sorry. So there are the four different types of splitting pattern you'll be expected to look out for. And this is this is actually typical of all NMR, but you might be taught it as high resolution NMR. And nobody really does low resolution NMR um, for structural characterization, at least. So these are the kind of splitting patterns that are quite common every day in uh, an organic chemistry lab or any kind of lab, biochemistry lab or something like that. Okay, so that's an introduction to the splitting patterns. And I'll put a few examples up on Epistemio uh, for you to practice with. And these will be real examples or some predicted spectra. So that's it for now. Bye for now.